Chem 2211, distillation. We're going to be separating a binary mixture using both fractional and simple distillation today. So let's go over the glassware that you're going to need to put together your distillation apparatus. We have our distillation head, a 50 mil round bottom flask, 2440 size. All this glassware is 2440, so it'll fit together nicely. We have our condenser, graduated cylinder, short stem glass funnel, which is going to make collecting our drops a little bit easier. We've got our thermometer so we can record our temperature. We have a thermometer adapter, which is going to allow us to set that thermometer in the top of our distillation head so that we can seal the system. We've got a ring clamp and two three-prong clamps that are going to hold everything together. We have our water tubing. That's going to allow us to fill our condenser with cold water. So our hot vapors and our fumes will recondense inside the condenser so we can collect it. We have our heat source, which is a heating mantle. And we have our power source, which is our variac. Let's put everything together. All right, so let's go ahead and take all of our glassware items and set up our distillation apparatus. First thing that we're gonna do is take our ring clamp. This is gonna be used as a platform to hold up our heating mantle. This will be our heat source. We're then gonna place one of our three-prong clamps above it. We're gonna use this to hold the neck of our 50 mil round bottom flask. We can adjust, using our monkey bars here, we can adjust the height of our apparatus. And make sure that we clamp right at our joint. So our distillation head will fit down into the top of the round bottom flask, and then we'll make sure that we clamp around the top of this flask, just to make sure everything is secure. Here's our distillation head. Now before we seat this into the top of the flask, we need to make sure that we grease the joint. So I'm going to take a small amount of vacuum grease, just a tiny bit. We don't want to overdo this. And I'm going to rub it along the very top edge of my joint. And I'm going to do the same thing on the side arm where the condenser meets the distillation head as well. And that just makes sure that we have a good seal so that none of our vapors can escape the system. Make sure to clean off the grease off of our fingers so we don't get it on everything as we continue to build. Now, <clears throat> the top of our distillation head obviously is open at this point. We need to use our thermometer and our thermometer adapter to close that off. And that's how we're gonna be reading the temperature of our vapors during the course of the experiment. So I take my thermometer adapter. This normally is tightened down. I'm gonna loosen it up. This will allow me to insert the thermometer. I'll go ahead and place that through the center of the thermometer adapter. And I'll tighten it down all the way. I'm gonna place this into the top of our setup, like so. Now at this point, we've got to adjust the height of our thermometer. We don't want the bell of the thermometer uh, down in the bottom of the, well, right now we're caught in the neck, we're caught in the ground glass joint, which means we're gonna be reading vapor temperatures uh, down very close to the actual receiving, or the distillation flask itself. So I wanna pull the base of the thermometer up so that our bulb is right at that intersection. So as our vapors rise, they're gonna come into contact with the bulb of the thermometer. We're gonna see that reading reflected on our thermometer, and then the vapors are gonna condense down into our uh, distilling, or into our catch flask. Next up, we're gonna take our clamp, our second clamp, and I'm gonna go ahead and put this into general position. This is going to clamp right in the middle of our K2211 
condenser. This is going to support the system in the center. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and clamp it in place. Obviously they're not lining up perfectly, so I'm going to have to I'm going to have to alter this just a little bit. And this is just something that you have to get a feel for. Now they're seated. I'm going to rotate the joint slightly so that the grease uh, comes into full contact in our ground glass joint, seals it up nicely. And there we go. So we've got our condenser in place, seal joint, seal joint, seal joint. So as our vapors come up from the distilling flask, we're not going to lose anything to the top to either of these two ground glass joints. Everything's going to come out uh, recondensed from our condenser. To collect that distillate, we're going to be using a graduated cylinder because we need to be able to take readings. Every mill of distillate collected, we're going to go back and check our thermometer and record a temperature so that we can uh, create a graph of temperature versus volume for our data. I'm going to put a short stem funnel into our graduated cylinder just to make it even easier to catch each drop as it comes out, and we'll be all set. Now that we have our glassware set up, it's time to add our water tubing. So I'm going to go ahead and move this graduated cylinder away so I don't accidentally knock it over. So we have an inlet and an outlet on our condenser. This is a double jacketed piece of glassware, meaning that if we uh, attach our tubing to our inlet, Attach that inlet hose to our faucet here. Attach a second tube or a second hose to our outlet. That is then going to go into our cup sink. We can turn on the water source here and we can fill that outer sleeve around the inner tube with cold water. That means that as our vapors come up into the distilling head, they're going to have the cool water flowing through the condenser, which is going to help them condense and move down into our graduated cylinder. All right. Our inlet has to be at the bottom. We need to be filling water from the low end and that our water exits the condenser on the high end. Otherwise, we can't fill up the jacket completely. You can imagine that if you had your inlet coming in from the high end, the water would just flow from the highest point to the lowest point, and we would never fill the entire inner sleeve here. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and turn on that water, just so you can get a sense of how this is going to work. And there we go. We will always have a small uh, gap or air bubble here, unless we turn on the water at a very high rate. The problem with that is that if you have too much water pressure, you can pop a hose and then water goes everywhere. So we'll take a look at the outflow here. And I'm going to turn the water flow down just a little bit, and that should be reasonable for our experiment. Okay. Now I'm going to turn that off for just one second so we can go ahead and load our unknown solution, our binary mixture, into our round bottom flask. So I'm going to go ahead and loosen this clamp. I'm going to drop my heating mantle. And I'm going to bring my round bottom flask over here, where we've measured out 21 milliliters of our unknown. Our unknown that we're going to be using today is 536124D. So we're going to write that down on our sheet. 536124D. And our exact starting volume is 21 milliliters. Now for today, the data that we're going to be collecting we're going to be looking at, for our simple distillation and for our fractional distillation, we're going to be writing down all of the temperatures as we collect the first drop and every subsequent milliliter that's collected 
in our gradu graduated cylinder here. That's going to be our data points that we're going to use to create our graph for writing up our lab report. So what I'll do is I'll take my 21 mils. Go ahead and pour it into the flask. I'm going to get two boiling chips. One boiling chip and two boiling chips. And now I'm ready to reconnect this to the apparatus. Lift my heating mantle back into place. And we're almost ready to begin. We've got a couple of things that we need to do before we can begin. First is adding our power source to our heating mantle. So one of the things that you want to be very careful of, this is our variac. This is what's going to be controlling uh, the amount of electricity going to our heating mantle. The heating mantle has a plug, a very special plug. That's our plug here. So we've got a two-prong plug and we've got a circular connector. That's going to connect just like so, we twist it to lock it in place. You have to be very, very careful never to plug the heating mantle directly into an outlet without any uh, regulation, power regulation. It will just heat and begin to heat exponentially until it burns itself out. Very, very dangerous. That's why we plug it into a Variac. The Variac will allow us to control between low all the way up to high or 10, how much electricity is flowing to our heating mantle and maintain a constant temperature. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and set that to off. I'll take my plug, and I think I'll just plug it in right here. Okay, so we're all set. We've got our power source connected. We've got our heating mantle ready to go. We make sure one last time that the bulb of our thermometer is in the right position. So it's right here uh, at, the, at the neck where we make our connection to the condenser. I'm going to move my snorkel over to just above where our distillate is coming out, just in case we have any vapors, any fumes whatsoever. Make sure that we're firmly seated. All of our joints are connected and greased properly. And then finally, let's go ahead and turn our water back on to make sure we've got cold water flowing through our system. It looks like everything is set, so we're ready to go ahead and turn on our Variac and begin the experiment. I'm going to start off turning this to 7. That's a good starting point. What we want is to start collecting distillate between one to two milliliters per minute. We don't want it to go any faster than that. We could go slower, but that obviously uh, lengthens the amount of time that we have for the experiment. But if we go too fast, we're not going to get a good separation of our binary mixture. So we're going to check back in. We'll let this heat up. So as our heating mantle starts to heat, and I'll be checking it. Uh, just to make sure that everything's working properly with our heating mantle, we'll come back in and check uh, the temperature at the sign of the first drop. Okay, so we've received our first drop of distillate into our graduated cylinder. You can see a remnant of it here. We're forming a second drop as we speak. So let's go check our temperature. Right now we are at 65 degrees, so 65 degrees for the first drop of our distillate. We have our Variac set to 6 right now. We can look in our distillation head. You can see the, uh, the vapors forming and recondensing inside the distillation head. A certain portion of them will uh, catch and go down into our condenser. Some of it will be recondensing back down into the, uh, the boiling flask. 
we set our variac to six to make sure that we're getting a collection rate of about one to two mils per minute. We don't want to rush either the simple or the fractional distillation because that's going to, uh, to give us poor results and poor separation. We'll check back in once we've collected our first milliliter of distillate. So we're at one milliliter collected at this point. Our thermometer reading is 71 degrees. We'll check back in for mil two. We've now collected two milliliters of our distillate and our temperature is now at 73. We've collected three milliliters of distillate. Our temperature is currently at 74 degrees Celsius. Four mils of distillate collected and our temperature is currently 74 degrees Celsius. We have five milliliters of distillate collected. Our current temperature is 75 degrees Celsius. So we've collected six milliliters of distillate and we're now at 76 degrees Celsius. So we've collected seven milliliters of distillate at this point. Our temperature is currently at 77 degrees Celsius. We've collected eight milliliters of distillate at this point. Our temperature reading is currently 78 degrees, 79 degrees Celsius. We've collected nine milliliters of distillate and we're currently at 82 degrees Celsius. We've collected 10 mils of distillate at this point and we're at 89 degrees Celsius. We've currently collected 11 milliliters of distillate. We're currently sitting at 96 degrees Celsius. We've now collected 12 mils of distillate and our temperature is currently sitting at 97 degrees Celsius. We've collected 13 milliliters of distillate and our temperature is sitting at 97 degrees Celsius. We've collected 14 milliliters of distillate and we're still holding steady at 97 degrees Celsius. That's gonna be our final data point for the simple distillation. Make sure that you've recorded all of the values that I've given you over the course of the last few minutes. You'll use that data to make your Excel graph to determine the efficiency of your simple distillation. Okay, so let's go ahead and set up our fractional distillation apparatus. We've already shown you the simple distillation and it's very similar to that. We've just got one addition, one change, uh, one point of differentiation. So we're going to have our ring clamp already attached. We'll put our heating mantle in. We've got our round bottom flask. We'll go ahead and anchor this in. Now with our simple distillation set up, at this point we would attach our distillation head. What we're doing with fractional distillation is we're adding in a fractionating column. And what this is is a long cylindrical piece of glass that is filled with steel wool in this case. It could be glass beads. There's a lot of different materials that you could use. But this is steel wool packed inside this long fractionating column. We're going to insert that into the top of our boiling flask. The idea being that as our vapors enter the fractionating column. They're gonna hit our steel wool and condense. Then as the temperature rises up into our fractionating column, they will revaporize, hit another patch of our steel wool and recondense again. So we're gonna have multiple uh, evaporations and recondensations within this column before we get to the distillation head, which is the very top of our fractionating column. 
So multiple simple distillations happening inside of our fractionating column. Okay. The rest of the build is identical to what we did for our simple distillation. We're going to take a clamp in the middle. This is what's going to hold up our fractionating column, or sorry, our, con our condenser. We want to get our angle right. We don't want to have any stress or strain on any of this glassware, if we can help it. Okay. We've already greased these joints, just like we did with the simple distillation setup. We've got our inlet and our outlet for our water tubing that we'll set up in just a second. We've got our thermometer, our second thermometer here, and our thermometer adapter. We simply unscrew that. There's a small O-ring. I don't know how visible that is. There's a small O-ring that when we screw down the cap compresses around the thermometer and that's what holds it in place. You have to be very careful. If I don't screw down the cap sufficiently, we can release vapors through the thermometer adapter and then the thermometer can also drop through all the way down into the round bottom flask and break both the thermometer and the rest of the glassware. So what we'll do here is we'll insert that into our distillation head. And just as we did before, we're going to make sure that it's positioned, the bottom of our bulb is positioned right at that cross point, right where the condenser meets our distillation head. Then I'll go ahead and tighten down the thermometer adapter and make sure everything's snug. Now I have my water tubing. Something that we didn't mention before, in our first experiment, recrystallization, we saw our vacuum tubing. This is latex water tubing, significantly more pliable, more flexible, uh, and thinner than our vacuum tubing. We don't want to use vacuum tubing for running water into our condenser because it will rot out that rubber very quickly. So the latex tubing is uh, our tubing of choice here. So this is our inlet. So this is going to go to our faucet. Here's our outlet. And this, of course, will sit in our sink. And then we'll go ahead and test out our condenser with a slow flow of water, and there we go. Again, we'll check our outflow, and that's a pretty aggressive flow of water, so I'm gonna dial it back just a little bit there, and we should be fine. There we go, and we're all set. Again, our fractionating column being the main addition here between our fractional setup and our simple setup. We have our fractional distillation setup complete. We've added a hot plate. We're not actually gonna use it for heating or, or stirring at this point. We're using it uh, simply to prop up our graduated cylinder to get us a little bit closer to the end of our condenser so that we catch every drop of distillate as it forms. We have everything set up and sealed. We have 21 milliliters of the same unknown that we used for our simple distillation, two boiling chips. Our heating mantle is ready to go. We are plugged in to our Variac, so we can go ahead and start our heating. We're gonna start this out at a setting of eight. And in order to make sure that the, heat, the heating remains consistent throughout, we've added a lot of surface area between our, and a lot of distance between our distillation head and our boiling flask. We're going to wrap the entire bottom part of this fractionating column and boiling flask in tin foil. We'll show you that after we collect the first drop. We collected our first drop of distillate from our fractional distillation setup. 
and our temperature is currently 63 degrees Celsius. We'll check back in after we've collected the first milliliter of our distillate. This is a good time to show you the tinfoil setup. We've covered everything from the boiling flask, the fractionating column, and the distillation head with tinfoil to make sure that the heat is even and maintained throughout the system so we don't have any cool down as we move up towards the thermometer. We'll check back in once we've collected one milliliter of distillate. We've now collected one milliliter of our distillate from the fractional distillation. We're at 65 degrees Celsius currently. We've now collected two milliliters of distillate and our temperature is 66 degrees Celsius. We've now collected three milliliters of distillate and our temperature is holding steady at 66 degrees Celsius. We've now collected four milliliters of distillate and our temperature is holding steady at 66 degrees Celsius. We've now collected five milliliters of our distillate and our temperature is 66 degrees Celsius. We've now collected six milliliters of our distillate and once again we're holding steady at 66 degrees Celsius. We've now collected seven milliliters of our distillate. We're holding steady at 66 degrees Celsius. We've now collected eight milliliters of distillate from our fractional distillation setup. We're still hovering at 66 degrees Celsius. We've now collected nine milliliters of distillate and our temperature is currently at 69 degrees Celsius. Just as a brief interlude as we're collecting our fractions, uh, we're looking at the boiling flask and of course we're vaporizing our liquid, our binary mixture, and it's moving up the fractionating column. At the end of the experiment, we'll take off the tin foil so you'll be able to see the remaining liquid. Let's take a look at the interface between the distillation head and our condenser so you can see that as our vapors reach this point, they're recondensing into liquid and then flowing down the condenser and coming out the end of our condenser and dripping down into our graduated cylinder. We've now collected 10 milliliters of our distillate and the temperature has increased to 97 degrees Celsius. We've collected 11 milliliters of distillate from our system and we're currently at 97 degrees Celsius. We've now collected 12 milliliters of distillate and the thermometer is still reading 97 degrees Celsius. 13 milliliters of distillate have been collected so far. Temperature is still hovering at 97 degrees Celsius. We've collected 14 milliliters of distillate, and this will be our final mill of distillate collected. The temperature is remaining stable at 97 degrees Celsius. So we've finished our collection process. We wanted to unwrap the column just so you could get a chance to see the fractionating column in action. You'll notice that there is still liquid both in the fractionating column, still beaded up both on the sides of the glass and on the uh, steel wool. We've also got liquid still boiling in the flask. We never boil to dryness in the lab. We're very careful to avoid that. And we still have vapor evident up in the distillation head. So it doesn't mean that at 14 milliliters we had collected everything. Just like our simple distillation, we still have some liquid left over in the boiling flask. We know that we started with 21 mils of our binary mixture in the beginning, and we have to use that factor that into our calculations when we're trying to calculate our ratios and identify the unknown binary components of our mixture. Good luck writing up your lab report.